great to be back. Thank you. Well, let's Thank just you. start with how, how you're feeling. I feel good. I feel good. It was COVID's no joke. <laughs> so it wasn't a great experience going through it, but um, I feel good now. So that's what matters. What was it? What did you go through? What was the first days uh, like? And... Yeah, so it was sore throat for two days. Then it was chills and like flu symptoms. Then it was like more cold symptoms like cough and congestion. And getting through that was like the last piece. But low energy. And, yeah. I was be getting old because because <laughs> they say for like young people it's oh no problem and for me it's kind of like this sucks. <laughs> How is it to be away, especially this, as a coach, they always say practices are what you mean, mean everything. What is it like to not be here? For Awful. Awful. It was the hardest part, and I told the guys this, the hardest part was not seeing them, you know, and being around them. Like, the practice is what, is what it is, and the drills and the games and stuff, but just being around these guys, it's such a fun group. I missed them, so that was the hardest part. John Lucas said you probably had the game plan set for December because you were at home, you know. What was that like? What were you doing and, and as far as being productive? Yeah, I was, I was stressed out about my numbers and like passing the test and mad because I can't pass the test, which is completely out of my control. So the first few days I was just angry, man. <laughs> but afterwards, you know, like I can't control what the tests are going to say. I can't watch every ounce of film every single day. I can, you know, watch something on Netflix and take it easy, relax a little bit. So after the first few days, I was able to, I didn't do what Luke said as far as like, you know, planning every single thing. I didn't do that. But for a couple of days there, it's pretty close. <laughs> Entering your third season now, you've had a chance, uh, third third time the third season here in Houston, you had a chance to see the machine that's going on across the street, the Astros. What was your reaction uh, just yesterday and all the success they've been still having lately? That was crazy. That was so much fun. I mean, that home run, and it was, there was no doubt as soon as he hit it. So it's great to see Dusty and him doing his thing, and it's great to see championship sports here in Houston. And uh, it's aspirational for sure for us and our group, but that was awesome. <laughs> I was like, that's what you, that's playoff level athletics, which is so cool. And only moments like that happen in big time like spots. That's, that's great. How did you keep tabs on what was going on here while you were away? <laughs> I talked to Luke every day, a couple times a day. Um, I was texting back and forth with some of the players, but I didn't want to overbear them because I could have texted them every single player, you know, I, I just I just didn't want to do that. So, um, yeah, I kept in touch with the assistant coaches, particularly Luke, and I talked to Rappel as well. When did you feel like you should have been? I still don't. <laughs> I got I got two negative tests, man. I'm good. good. But the energy. But yeah, the energy. The energy isn't what it, what it was before. What did you see from your team that you liked? I'm sure you were watching. Oh, what did you like? A lot. I liked our energy. I liked our effort. Our multiple effort on defensive end was good, especially in the Toronto game. Um, the way we started the Miami game was great. And, uh, you know, hitting a little bit of adversity and still kind of coming back. And, um, you know, there's a lot to learn from, from those games, for sure. But I like the direction that we're going, for sure. What were the main differences that you saw out of how Alper and Shingun played against the San Antonio Spurs and then how he played against the Miami Heat? Yeah, for, so for Alpi, it's been hard because Alpi's strength is having the basketball, right? And he hasn't had the ball much. He's been a pick-and-roll player. Um, as we get through training camp, which is still going on, he'll get his post-ups and he'll get his elbow catches and it'll be more comfortable for him. But he's going to have to be able to do both, right? Like, he's going to have to be able to um, be a guy that we can go to and can make plays for himself or his teammates. But also, you know, pick, roll, get in a dunker, space, that kind of thing, and have guys play off him. So. Uh, that adjustment has been a little bit tough for him, but we'll definitely get there. Coach, you talked about being frustrated, you know, being away, but did you have somewhat of a sense of um, comfort knowing that this team was in the hand of John Lucas? Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, 
Yeah, Luke's been been here, done that more than me. So um, the way he is with the guys, the communication that he has, the responsibility that he has on a daily basis, even when I'm here, is completely comfortable with him taking over the range. Coach, is there anybody that you've coached in the past that you compared Tari Eason and his energy and what he brings to the court? Not really. I mean, he has a knack for the basketball, which is really incredible. My dad thinks he looks like him. So, <laughs> he's such a good offensive rebounder and putback guy. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with my dad on that one. I didn't really see my dad play like that, but, you know, I'll go with that. What do you mean you didn't see him play? I mean, I was super young, right? So, oh, okay. play, I didn't see him play, I should say. I mean, the game was different, but it's not a bad comparison. I mean, the offensive rebounds knows where the ball is going, has a knack for getting it and putting it back, runs in transition. Shoots a lot better than my dad, but, you know, shoot. Dad did a lot of good things in the league, so if he could do that, that would be, that'd be great. With the first game right around the corner, what would you like to see from the team between now and that first game? Yeah, we just need to get better organized. Um, a lot of drill work that needs to be done, but also stay competitive, keep our competitive edge. Uh, firm out the lineups and the playing groups for sure. Um, but keep progressing. You know, it's just the start. <laughs> so this is that this, that'll be the end of training camp, preseason, and now it'll just be the start of the season. So putting all our eggs in that basket doesn't make sense. To me. Talk about the extra responsibilities. Or is that because of the personnel? Is it an efficiency scheme? Why, uh, as far as? Why you're asking to do more things this season? Yeah, I mean, part of it is playing as a starter, you know, and the group that he's playing with, for sure, and him getting comfortable playing with those guys, and um, also being able to play to his strengths, right, which is his post-ups and his elbow catches. Um, and then the defensive end is huge for him. And being able to be on the floor and not get into foul trouble and be uh, good in pick and roll coverage is like really, really a big piece. So that's yeah, all, he's a second year player and it's a big development, it's a big jump. And um, it's just developing. He's such a unique player. Does that provide any, I guess, challenges of how you're gonna most effectively use him? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I have a good grasp of what his strengths and weaknesses are, and that's where you start, right? You gotta go from there. So, yeah, I don't think so. How much of a setback is it or not that the Warriors missed a week and will miss a little more? Yeah. Sort of miss a little more. Um, I think it is a setback as far as like just yeah, coming along with the group and, and progressing through training camp and preseason, but. Like I said, it's a long season, so I'll catch up, and once he comes back, he'll be right back in the mix. Um, but any opportunity that you can have for a young guy to be out there with his teammates and figuring things out uh, are valuable, so him not being a part of it is not great. His goal is so defined, like, relatively defined for a rookie. He's more to finish possessions than to initiate for everybody else. Does it make it easier that he comes back, he kind of knows what he's supposed to do and where he's supposed yeah, to Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, he's not starting from scratch, for sure. So him knowing where his spots were, him having the uh, success that he had in the San Antonio game gives him a level of confidence going in to this injury and hopefully coming out. Was the continuity something that stood out to you in the Miami game between Kevin and uh, the Yeah, I mean, they play well together. They play well off of each other. And they look for each other, and there's no kind of, you know, how it can be. Like, maybe I don't want to pass it to that guy. No, those guys are on the same page, which is very important for dynamic scorers, but young guys as well. All right.